Hello viewers, hope all of you are doing great. I am in the process of creating a new tutorial video series where I will be showing you how to build a student's attendance management system completely from scratch. I will show you how to write each and every line of code to build this project. I will use PHP MySQL for the server side and HTML, CSS and JavaScript for the client side coding. By this time, I already have done the coding part. So first, let's see a quick demonstration of the project that we're going to build in this series. The attendance system comes with a login form where the user will be able to specify the username and the password. The attendance system is built for the faculty members of an institute. So I'll be using the terms faculties and users interchangeably. The login form will be used to verify a user before giving the user access to the main page. If both the username and the password specified by the user are right, in that case, the user will be redirected to the main page. When the faculty first lands on this page, the faculty will be given an option to select a session. As soon as the faculty selects a session, our application will display all the courses taken by that particular faculty in the selected session. From this list of courses, the faculty has to select one particular course. As soon as the faculty clicks on a particular course, our application will show the details of the course, such as the course code and the course title. Along with displaying the details of the course, our application will also display a list of all the students who enroll for that particular course in the selected session. As you can see, for each of the student, one checkbox will be displayed in the user interface, using which the faculty can mark the student either as present or absent. If the checkbox is checked, it means the student is present, otherwise the student is absent. A faculty can easily mark a student either as present or absent just by checking or unchecking the corresponding checkbox. As you can see, the faculty doesn't have to explicitly click on any save button to update the attendance of the students in the database. As soon as a faculty checks or unchecks a checkbox, the attendance of the corresponding student will automatically be updated in the database. Our application will also show a date time picker using which the faculty can change the attendance date. By default, it is the current date. However, if the faculty wants to view or edit the attendance of some other day, in that case, using this option, the faculty can change the date. Our application will also give an option to the faculty to download an attendance report. If the faculty clicks on this report button, then a CSV file will automatically be downloaded in the client's machine. The CSV file will contain some basic information such as what is the session, what is the title of the course, what is the code of the course, what is the name of the faculty, from which date to which date the classes were conducted and total how many classes were conducted. Along with this basic information, the CSV file will also contain the percentage of attendance for each and every student in that particular class. So for example, this particular student was present for seven classes out of eight classes. So the percentage of attendance is 87.50. Say for this student, this student was present for one class out of eight classes. So the percentage of attendance is 12.50. Along with these functional features, for better user experience, we'll also make this web page responsive. Let me show you. On large screen, the web page looks something like this. However, on small screen, the attendance page will look something like this. As you can see, the attendance page is completely responsive. And then we have this logout button. If the user clicks on this button, the user will be immediately redirected back to the login page. I'll publish this tutorial in seven chapters. For each chapter, there will be one video.
In the first chapter, we'll start with the initial requirement of the project. That is, what are the features that we want to build in our project or what are the assumptions that we are making while building this project. From the requirement, we'll draw an ER diagram and from there, we'll derive the database structure. That is, what are the tables that we want in our database or what are the columns that we want in our table or what are the relationships among the tables. All these things I'll discuss in chapter one. Then in chapter two, we'll spend some time with SQL queries. I'll show you how to write PHP programs from where you can execute SQL queries. I'll write PHP programs to automatically create the database tables in the database and also to fill the database tables with some sample records so that we can test the database. We'll also spend some time in learning how to perform join operation over multiple tables to get meaningful information out of the database tables. Then the third chapter is going to be quite interesting because we're going to do some visual work in this chapter. We are going to build the front end login page in this chapter. You will see me using HTML, CSS and a bit of JavaScript to create the login page. Then in the fourth chapter, I'll show you how to connect the front end login page with the back end server. I'll show you how to pass information such as the username and password from client side to the server side. And also on the server side, how to extract the information and how to process the information. And at the end, how to send response back to the client. All these things we'll see in chapter four. Then in chapter five, we'll design the attendance page. You will see me using some of the very important CSS features such as CSS flags, CSS grid, and media queries to create the responsive attendance page. In sixth chapter, I'll show you how to connect the attendance front-end page with the back-end server. Since the attendance page contains a lot of features, here in this chapter, you'll see me writing a lot of code, a lot of PHP programs. In this chapter, I'll show you how to make use of Ajax calls to fetch information from the server without refreshing the page. And then we'll have a quick final conclusion video where I'll be telling you how you can use this project as the starting point and add new features to it and make this project your own project. As I said you, I have already done the coding part. That is, I already have recorded the coding part, but still I have to do some editing or maybe some voiceover. So what I'll do is I'll upload these videos into today's gap. Say for example, this intro video I'm uploading at 29th of September. So what I'll do is the first video I'll upload on 1st of November. Then after two days on 4th of November, I'll upload chapter two and so on. I'm very much excited about this project. So if you're also feeling the same way, then please subscribe the channel so that you are notified as soon as I upload a new chapter. If you like this intro video, then please press the like button and also let me know your feedback in the comments section. Your feedbacks are quite precious for me. So please feel free to write them. Thank you for watching and see you guys in the first chapter of this tutorial series. Till then, have a nice day.